Russell, Red Hat, and so many other vendors. And uh, our instructors are certified instructor from the vendor. It's not like that uh, someone from our team just passed the exam and started the training. So where there's a process to become certified instructor. So all of our instructors are certified instructor. So they are authorized from the vendors. Uh, they can deliver their trainings. So therefore, we are hundred percent. We are uh, confident that what are the content uh, we are delivering, and we deliver in future. So these are hundred percent aligned with the vendor requirements. So thank you very much to support us. Thank you very much uh, uh, joining this session. Uh, this session is uh, about uh, CHFI uh, about investigator course. Many people think that okay, what is the right track for us? What is the right certification program for us? that we can start of uh, we can learn or if someone is working they want to basically switch their career might be they're working in the infra side system side network side and they're planning to switch their uh, career or uh, this or uh, the field uh, from network or infra to security side so we'll guide the people we'll guide you we'll guide everyone regarding all these things uh, how you can switch your job I mean, uh, how you can uh, how you can switch your basically field if you're working in IT in infra side. So you are planning to start your career in uh, cybersecurity. As you know, that cybersecurity is right in the hot area. It's a hot hot field. More opportunities are there. So people love to go for that because more salaries are there, and uh, definitely there are so many certifications, uh, so many job roles. Uh, before you start, before you decide that what certification or what uh, program is uh, suitable to, yes, please. Someone, anyone has a question? Uh, Shivas, could you please uh, mute the mic for everyone? So if there's any questions, so they can write in a chat or then we can uh, unmute if it is required. Okay, so we are official partners of EC Council and uh, you know that EC Council is uh, one of the leading uh, cybersecurity certifications uh, vendor who is offering certifications uh, in cybersecurity uh, since uh, 2000, 2001, so almost 20 years. It's a big number. It's a big number and working in cybersecurity and all the trainings of uh, EC Councils are uh, ANSI and DOD approved certification program. It means that the content uh, which EC Council is covering, uh, these contents are standardized. It means these contents are basically aligned with the real world. It doesn't mean that the content we have in the programs, uh, these content will not play any role in the real world. So EC Council is pretty sure about all these things that the content we are using in the courses, these contents are basically aligned with the real world. So we are 100% sure you will learn a lot of things during this course, during the training program by the IC Council. So let's move to the basic of our uh, demo session. As you know that this class is about CHFI. So CHFI is a computer hacking forensic investigator class. So this certification uh, is basically a uh, very, very uh, important uh, for the people that work in cybersecurity. And this uh, this set of skills is basically uh, playing important role into our uh, day-to-day activities. Now, before that, I move to the basically content of this course. I will let you know the few job opportunities or few uh, uh, job roles that basically uh, required such kind of knowledge. Like, as you know that uh, nowadays uh, a SOC analyst is basically, there are more opportunities about the SOC analyst. SOC is Cyber Security Operations Center, okay? So analysts, basic people, they are doing day-to-day -day analysis. So there are different, uh, there are basically multiple uh, layer of analysts. Like we have L1, then L2, L3, and uh, then we have Threat Hunter, and then managers are there. When we are talking about the L1 analysts, so basically these are the people, uh, these are the uh, engineers, they pick the alerts, they uh, receive the call from the end user, they get the alert from the dash, uh, on the dashboards, whatever the solutions organizations are using. So they get the alert, they get the uh, information and then they start investigation, so investigation. So they confirm that the alert, the event uh, they have received 
it's a genuine incident or not this is a real malicious activity or not this activity that is against the company policy or not if it is and then there's a classification there are different categories are the like there's a critical then there's a high then medium and low sometimes we uh, align these things with us like p1 p2 p3 p4 and sometimes only high medium and low it depends basically what model organizations are using so these people if this is a low and medium uh, medium uh, incident then what they do they handle by themselves there's the sops are there or they follow sops are called standard operation procedures so whatever the place they have created what are the standard procedures are they they follow they check for example or uh, just say i will take the incident of email if there's a malicious email is received so what they do they simply check the source of that email then reputation of that domain and then the origin country okay then what are the content inside of that is there any phishing link inside this email or not is there any attachment if attachment and link is there so these links are basically malicious or not attachment is malicious or not if this is executed on the system what damage could be there so l1 simply do these analysis and categorize under class like they basically put this incident under the under the one of uh the classification that we have done if it is low level or uh, medium then they handle by themselves because uh, it's a basic level there's not uh, this is uh, there's no big damage on the organization there's no serious threat so they handle by themselves but if the incident is related to higher critical then definitely they involve l2 in that case l2 experienced people they have experience in the field so they do the deep analysis on that deep analysis mean of uh, like might be uh, i have received a malicious email that email contain the a malicious link or uh, this attachment i unfortunately i open that email okay i click on the link i open the file i executed the file there could be damage on the system so these people basically do the damage assessment as well they look okay after execution what process are created what basically user has provided after clicking on that how many uh, people have received this email okay might be from uh, that system back to the created or might be from that system traffic is sent to the other devices so l2 experienced people they do some such kind of analysis the deep analysis and then they prepare the report and then for the report basically that report is sent to the uh, team lead or management but if uh, this is again uh, if it is going to impact the entire organization okay again the categories are classification is there so chat like ir process like organization level ir process like instant response plus a process uh, required to initiate then they also engage l3 level 3 experts level 3 experts basically with more experience because these are people or uh, they work for different organizations okay uh, they dealing the or uh, handling the incident Uh, organizations uh, in many organizations so they have more experience about such kind of activities and then in ir process initiated and then our uh, steps are followed as per the company policy so initially uh, you can say l1 l2 l3 so these are three different job roles where this certification will help you a lot and there are a lot of opportunities in the market about l1 level 1 uh, job opportunities in next might be one year or two years it is going to reduce why uh, because security operation centers are security tools that we are uh, using in the market like well known tools qdar uh, logarithm rsa net witness and so many other tools are available in the market so these tools basically adopting the automation okay of Ad adopting the smart response mechanism what is what is smart response mechanism or automation so there are predefined actions are there okay if someone receive a email do the like email well like uh, reputation check of that email check for all the links links are genuine or not check for the source source might be blacklisted or blacklisted so check all these things then if category it match with the rule then take the actions immediately what is that action for example if user click on that link then lock the account immediately okay disable the uh, lock the account immediately if this system is if user open the file and uh, he has executed the file then immediately isolate that system from the network so these are basically automation or smart response from uh, in the tools so l1 jobs are going to reduce might be next couple of years so you will not as l1 so l2 
opportunities are still there. So you can expect like up to uh, 1.5 million jobs in next couple of years. That is basically research uh, says that in next two years, there will be 1.5 million job opportunities of in cybersecurity. And then uh, there are so many other job roles available that uh, you can, uh, audience can uh, look for that, like uh, network security engineers, or uh, system side, system security, and uh, might be IR managers, like a threat hunter. Threat hunter people, they have the expertise in the coding and programming. They have the expertise in reverse engineering as well. So these are people, they don't depend on the day-to-day uh, -day alerts, day-to-day -day detection. For example, if antivirus is antivirus detected or uh, something, so, and then do the analysis. These people, threat hunter, basically these uh, people, are. Uh, Threat Hunter knows the organizations very well. They understand the organization requirement. So they have that capability. They can think out of the box. They don't rely only on the uh, tool. They don't rely only on the built-in mechanism that basically our uh, different security tools are using to detect or uh, response to activities. And then there are different uh, job roles. Each job role has its own uh, requirements in the experience side. For example, L1, a fresh graduate, a newcomer can start working as L1. So what he or she need, what level of knowledge he or she required to start the job as L1, only the understanding of computing technology. Sometimes what happens when uh, you move, uh, like when you talk to any trainer, any training center, so they will say, okay, do CCN, they do CCNP, do MCSC. No, it is not, honestly, uh, it is not required. What you need? What you need uh, for L1 analyst, you need only to understand uh, the environment. You only need to understand the computing technology, that's all. You must have the, some basic knowledge of networking, like routers, how these devices are working, right? How the log, basically uh, how they generate the logs. Then system side, operating system like Linux and Windows environment, you must understand uh, basically how the Microsoft Windows work. What are the built-in services in Microsoft Windows? Okay, how to enable disable log, how to read the log of these operating systems, like especially audit related log. And then same thing for the application database. You don't need to be expert in application. You don't need to be expert in database. I, d I have never seen anyone in cybersecurity that who is working as an analyst and he's a DBA. Yeah. He's a DBA. I never see any person that who's working as analyst, but he's a, a good programmer. So these skills, if you have, expertise in programming side, networking side, system side, that will help you a lot. But it does, doesn't mean that you need all these things to start the career as a L1, as a level one analyst. So you need the basic understanding with the environment, uh, like networking route, especially router switches, firewalls, how these are uh, plants are working, then applications, web technology, like web application, uh, some basic knowledge of database, some basic knowledge of Windows and Linux environment, and then security understand definitely uh, you are going to work as L1 an analyst. So you need a good knowledge about security. You must understand the hacker approach. You must, must understand the basic life cycle of hacking that how the hackers think, how hackers plan their attack, how hackers basically execute their attack. So for this purpose, what, what you can do, you can start the different certifications and plus there are frameworks are there that normally we follow uh, in the real world, like kill chain, uh, kill chain is there that we follow sometime to understand the basically attack attack methods, and we also follow the Mitre framework uh, to understand the attack methods, the different uh, uh, different basically the uh, like uh, type of activities that attackers could perform uh, against organizations. Okay. So that you need, and then definitely you are working as analyst where you have to do the analysis on a regular basis. On a regular basis, the different activities are the events are there that you need to work with, that you need to look into the uh, look into. So for that purpose, you must able to understand the basic investigation side that how to do, do the analysis. If we receive a malicious email, if there's an email is there, what is the basically process that we need to do the we need to follow to validate that email? Okay, if we need or uh, to prepare, prepare, prepare the report, what are the steps that I need to follow? What are the tools that I can use? If there's system data activity, what are the basically the different activity you have to perform? So CHFI is there, this course will help you. This course will prepare you uh, for the uh, L1, L2 and threat enter job role. 
but condition you must read this course very well you must attend the training and you must practice and you must uh, read the news articles on a regular basis so if you do all these things then technically you are good enough to work as l1 l2 as a threat hunter other than technical job roles there is ir manager job role so security operations center manager or is information security officer and there are so many other job roles for the manager manager level that required a totally different set of uh, like skill set different uh, experience okay so it is not technical only the management experience is required minimum 5 years experience in information technology and then some other program and capability to handle the team capability to manage a team so that is required for the man management side as friends any question if you have in your minds if you want to talk uh, discuss something please go ahead anyone in chat okay perfect okay there's a one question in the chat let's see okay perfect thank you so what will cover in this course chfi how the lab environment environment will be i will show you one demo as well okay the i lab environment all these things i will explain to you here my system Hello. is bits yes please uh, yeah i have a question uh, as you said that layer one job is going to uh, be managed because of the automation so uh, i just had a question if uh, just going to start a um, uh, job in uh, soc as a layer one so what is the expected time that uh, layer one jobs will vanish from the field okay it is not going to vanish completely it is not going to vanish i said it will reduce the reason uh, you know uh, the reason behind it is a smart response such kind of things will be introduced uh, like already it implemented in many organizations so but the number of jobs will be reduced so what the companies will do basically they are expecting that if there is something related to l1 like for example if the tools are not able to detect and some incident reported by the user so who will take care such kind of things so definitely for that purpose we need less number of people so it is not going to completely remove these jobs but it is going to reduce okay yes yeah okay so there's no time frame that how long it will take but as many technologies of many vendors they are adopting the automation adopting a smart response so definitely for the new project so instead of uh, hiring more l1 people they will prefer to bring l2 and l2 people might be they can do the l1 job if there's any incident anything any event that is reported by the user and required some basic like required some analysis of and that is under the pr like low and medium category so might be l2 l2 will handle now these things but still opportunity will be there many new organizations definitely if the vendors are adding the smart response and uh, automation in the tool definitely they will charge more money for that because these are some additional services that they are offering and whenever they offer the additional services they will charge more so there are still so many organization they those cannot afford uh, this much cost i can give you the example for example if a company has 1000 node approximately uh, they are paying uh, 50000 uh, 50000 usd per month to monitor or the 1000 nodes uh, sorry 100 nodes in the real world so approximately 50000 uh usd they are paying per month to manage the 100 nodes okay so still there are more of companies cannot afford the cost so they will prefer to have the l1 and secondly uh l1 more, most of the time they work 24 by 7 so number of analysts will be reduced in l1 but it is not going to completely remove yes sir i hope that i answer your question Yeah, thank you. That's uh, a, a quite uh, answer. Thank you. Okay, there's a one question that uh, what makes HFI different from incident handling and incident response? Okay, uh, incident handling is basically is uh, related to the incident response. For example, if the incident has occurred, so how to process? It is not only the technical. Uh, incident handling is not only technical. It covers both technical and the management. Okay, so that. uh you do the analysis you basically uh do the uh you basically decide uh what type of activity it is under which category it is that basically do the classification as well 
okay you initiate the process okay technique so prepare the report the chfi is only the technical where you do the basically investigation so it is not only to handle that instead basically do the investigation investigation like for example like a postmortem okay instant handling also involves so many other phases like detection is stop that event okay then uh, contain that event contain that activity prepare the report but investigation it's like a postmortem so assume that incident has happened okay it is already occurred now you have to do the investigation you have to basically do the postmortem that why the incident has happened what damage it has given right and uh, so so many things are there that basically we study in this course so this is about like postmortem incident is already occurred now you're doing the postmortem the incident handling that basically how to handle the incident so it's a a to z like complete process is that you follow or uh, to manage handle or manage the incident like when we say handle that is technical side manage it's a managerial side yes sir any other question please yes sir i hope that answer your question okay okay perfect so definitely when we start the course uh, uh, there was one more question about the course just one minute friends uh, let me read that question i think that okay yes you can get this module okay that you can get you can uh, talk to uh, the mrgt team you can send an email and uh, you will get this uh, recording as well okay uh no see experience uh, regarding attending this course there's no specific requirement that you must have this one experience what you need you must have the computing knowledge like might be a uh, system side network side so if you have experience like one year two years experience in information uh, system network side system side then you are okay to go with this training program then you are okay to go for this program if you don't have experience then definitely uh, you will not get the maximum uh, benefit so get the more benefit of this course we are expecting that you are having one year experience in information technology or information system it could be network side it could be system side or it could be might be the management side okay so any other question like nothing thank you okay so here are the module that will cover in this course yes one sorry guys my system is bit slow i'm not sure that what happened with the system so suddenly okay so these are the module that uh, will cover during this course that first that computer forensics what would ever definitely we will understand the importance of the uh, investigation or scenarios and the process basically what is investigation what is a common approach common process that we follow and why we need it what are the benefit that it can give to the organization then we'll talk about the process again that is purely about uh, the process because it is not only that technically do the analysis there's a uh, like a chain of custody is that, that we follow and then uh, okay then uh, there are basically the different job roles are there the different people involved in the investigation so for each and every uh, there's a specific job role they follow that we discuss in unit number 2 uh then we'll start technically uh doing the investigation or we'll start uh, post mortem of the storage like like hard disk for example files are damaged someone intentionally has deleted some files i uh, might be deleted some data so how to do the investigation of that uh, someone might be uh damaged the file systems like ntfs fat or xfs or ext so how to recover or how to do the post mortem of that and how to uh, basically identify the actual source of that activity then data acquisitions and duplication so that basically uh, gathering the data uh, that is also technical we understand basically data acquisitions and duplication process important because you know that when we're doing the investigation on the information technology we have two type of data one is data that is trans that is in wire and second that data is rest like data is on the storage so 
data environment, you know that it is difficult to uh, uh, retain uh, for long time. Okay, data in the memory difficult retain for a long time. Why? Because if you unplug the network cable, if you restart the devices, this data is no more available. So learn all these techniques during this process during this chapter. Then uh, you know attackers or people they basically also when they give the damage, what they do, they apply the anti forensic techniques to hide their activities to basically create some difficulties for the trace like as investigator when we do the investigation so definitely attacker they're intelligent they understand all this process very well so they try to perform some activity that can basically hide the traces that can hide what are the actions what are the damage they have given might be they have overwrite uh, the data might be they have overwrite the file system so we learn all about these things the different techniques that attacker use and how basically we can overcome such kind of uh, such kind of things. Then we'll talk about the operating systems of forensic operating system. We'll, we'll talk about uh, Linux, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Uh, we'll talk about uh, Mac. We'll talk about Microsoft Windows environment. And we'll see that basically how to do the analysis or how to do the investigation against the operating system if there is OS level activity. The network forensic, uh, forensic network like uh, network activities like logs, network traffic, connections, TCP, UDP ports, or sessions. All these things we we'll discuss during the network forensics and we'll see uh, some scenarios and this scenario will perform and we'll do some analysis and we'll prepare the report. Then the web applications, um, many organizations has deployed the web application environment. Then the real world, you can see banks, 100% working on the web application environment. Online portal like Sook.com, Amazon.com, Noon.com, or Alibaba, OLX.com. So they have the web application environment. So web application environment, you can see the multiple components are there. There's a web server. It could be Apache, or it could be IES, or it could be any other uh, open source uh, web server. Then it is connected to a database. It is has it has a connectivity with the firewall as well. It has the connectivity with the operating system. It means that multiple components are the very, very important area. And uh, there are so many security solutions available that uh, many organizations are implementing uh, to secure the web environment. Like well-known, uh, the name basically used for such kind of solution that is called WEF, Web Application Firewall. So we'll see that if there's a web application uh, related activity, how to do the investigation, like how to detect uh, like uh, SQL injection, how to detect or how to investigate the cross-site uh, cross-site scripting attack activities. Then in number nine, we'll talk about database. We'll see the different databases like SQL, uh, Oracle, uh, MariaDB, and then we'll see some uh, uh, built-in uh, databases in the operating systems. We'll talk about cloud computing unit number 10 or module 10 about cloud computing. We'll see the different type of services, deployment methods like public and private cloud, community-based, then software as a service, infra as a service, so we'll talk about all these things and plus we'll see that what type of threats we have there and how to investigate such kind of thing. If there is any incident in the cloud environment, as you know that many organizations are using cloud uh, services. So cloud services, it's a very, very challenging environment. Why? Because as a client, uh, if we are using a uh, public cloud and there's a big challenge as a client, we're not able to see inside that basically what is happening and then if there's a breach, we are not aware of that. Why? Because sometimes the cloud provider, they don't share the information with us. So what are the challenges that we have? But still, uh, there are something that we can do. A required objective, we can get our required information from the vendors. That will talk in the cloud computing, in the cloud, front, uh, cloud chapter. Then chapter number 11, it's about malware. Uh, malware, it's a basically malicious act. Anything that is malicious, it could be Trojan, it could be worm, it could be a virus, it could be backdoors, it could be uh, spyware, keyloggers, any activity that is malicious. So if that activity has uh, occurred in the environment, how to do the analysis of that? Okay, how to do the investigation? Then email, how to investigate the email crimes, as you know that uh, email email uh, almost everyone who is using a smartphone who is using a, a mobile device has the access to email because without email account you can't pursue it to the uh, even you cannot access a mobile phone why like if you're using android you need to have a account you need to basically log in if you have 
uh, you're using a um, app uh, like apple then definitely you have to create your account on the iStore. So email account is mandatory for everyone who is using the computing uh, system in the shape of smartphone, the shape of, the shape of PDA, laptop, anyone. So for attackers, it is very easy to launch the attacks, very easy to basically give the damage to organizations. So how to investigate the email crimes, email related activities that we discussed in unit number 12. And then mobile phones. We'll talk about Android, we'll talk about Apple iOS, and we'll talk about the Microsoft Windows mobile phone and BlackBerry in this chapter. And we'll see that how we can investigate if some crime is reported. Okay, what are the different challenges that we have here? We'll discuss in this chapter. And then chapter 14, that will be the final chapter. And we'll talk about the report writing. Very, very important, uh, very, very important phase because all analysis we have done, we have done the analysis. We are very good in analysis but we need to present the report. Might be that report will go to the court, might be that report will go to the management, or might be that go, report go to the uh, technical head. It means the report, the audience of that report is a different. So when you're preparing a report, you need to keep in mind that for what type of audience you are preparing this report. If you're preparing this report for the court, then definitely you need to engage the legal advisors. If you're preparing the report for the management, then you need to use the management language, business language that management can understand because most of the time management is not the technical. They don't understand the technical terminologies. And if you're preparing a report uh, for ISO, for uh, CIO, our team, uh, for your department, head of the department, IT department, then definitely you need to use a technical language. Okay, so it's a very, very important, important phase of uh, investigation. So these are the 14 units uh, we will cover during this course. And these 14 units will help you to grab L1 jobs, L2 jobs, threat hunter activities, and it will make you basically good in, in uh, instant response as well. Yes, friend, any question regarding the four, uh, these modules, please let me know. Any question that you have in your mind, please. Go ahead. Okay. So it seems that all is okay. Okay, friends. So how our training would be or about the CHFI course? Definitely we are the AC Council and uh, partners or uh, we cannot offer the gray market training. So without the course phase, you cannot write the exam, you cannot attend the training. So first you need to enroll yourself for the CHFI course. So then once you register, you will complete the training. Once training is completed, you will get that is a basically confirmation that you have a attended this training program with the IC Consult instructor of the IC Consul, right? Once this, that exam voucher will be basically uh, for exam. So you will write the certification exam. So that is uh, 31249. This is the exam code. And this exam is uh, MCQs, multi-choice questions. There's no practical inside the exam, but without having the hands-on experience on the labs, you cannot pass the exam because there are so many questions that come from the lab environment. Like when you do some activity, there's an the output of that. Output is given as a screenshot to you in the exam. And then you need to identify, you need to basically find the answer from that screenshot. So once training is completed, you will write the exam. So once you pass and you will get CHFI official certification. So exam title is CHFI Computer Hacking Forensic Investigator. The exam code is 31249. Number of questions are 150 and it is four hour exam. Availability uh, to write this exam, you need to register yourself with the ACC exam portal. So there are two different ways that you can write the exam. One that uh, you can uh, uh, write the exam with us, like with MRGT when you register for the training program. So you, you don't need to go anywhere else. Simply talk to the word coordinator so they can let you know when you can write the exam. So simply go there go to the office, MRGT office, okay, and you can write the exam at the same time. So 24 hours before, like normally what happened in the Pearson view, Microsoft Cisco exam, it is required to confirm 
the exam 24 hours before the exams. Simply give a call to the testing center, give a call to the office, check them their availability. If they are available, go there and write the exam. Second exam option that is remote proctor exam. Remote proctor exam you can do from home. You don't need to go anywhere. So you need only the internet connection. Right. And then, oh, but for that purpose, you have to pay some additional amount for the pro remote proctor exam. In that case, what will happen? Uh, proctor team of the AC council, they will monitor your exam. Okay. They will monitor your uh, your room uh, exam environment. For example, you are sitting in your room. So there will be additional camera and that camera basically will be used to monitor your uh, room environment. So that's a remote proctor exam, but for that purpose, you have to pay some extra money. So when you'll if anyone is willing to go for the remote proctor, remote proctor exam, so exam, so we can talk about that. And passing score is 70% uh, for almost all IC council programs. It means that you have to uh, achieve 70%. So if you 150 questions, it means uh, you must answer 105 questions correctly. Okay. And uh, exam is difficult. Why? Because it required a serious uh, reading. It's not something that just simply uh, go through the book and that's enough. No, you have to read the content very well. You need to understand this content very well. Because after this certification, many organizations are going to depend on you. Many organizations are going to trust on your skills that you are in a position to do these activities. So therefore, you need to have you need to uh, do some serious reading. Okay, read it, understand it do the labs and then write the exam. That's the best practice. Uh, class timing, uh, definitely we planning to start this course only on the weekends. So everyone can join the PF. It is uh, uh, convenient for the people to join this program. Uh, so they don't need to take off from the office. But second option, we have also classroom facility where uh, you can need to visit our office and uh, the session will be from morning to evening like eight hours a day and it will be five days of training so when you will attend the classroom training in that case uh, you will uh, basically will be we introduce to our office and all the information so restroom area all these things but this is only for the classroom training not for the virtual so virtual training so it depends we can take the break anytime Lab sessions, there's a big lab manual that you need to perform. I will show you the lab environment plus the lab manual as well, which you will follow. Uh, there are two lab environments. One that is EC Council is hosting over the cloud. So that is available for your remote access. So if, uh, this is uh, valid for six months. It means the six month you will have the lab environment access. The lab environment uh, is look like this. Just one minute, let me show you. I'm going to launch just one lab I use. So just to show you the lab environment that which is basically hosted by the C console over the cloud and that will be uh, available for your access. So sometime it is a part of the course and sometime you have to pay additional money. So it depends when you are registering for the course, how it will work. And second lab environment that for the classroom training, if you are attending a classroom training like in our office or it's a corporate training and we are giving this training in your office. So then we build the local classroom environment as per the AC council standard. When we build the local classroom environment, so that will be, it will take a few seconds more. Yes. For each module, there will be a couple of labs or there could be more lab as well. It depends on module. And so few labs are might be only one hour, few labs are two hours or might be few labs could take more time. It depends on the basic the activity that you are performing. So if you are using uh, if using the iLab environment by from the AC console, then definitely uh, you have to follow the lab manual. If you are doing uh, the labs, like performing the labs in the lab environment, like in the classroom environment, in that case, you are allowed to do the activity out of the box as well. But the manual that you will use for the labs, that will be the given to you. So that will be the official manual.
Friends, uh, it's a loading. So if you have any questions, so please uh, let me know. Uh, you can ask the questions, so I will answer your question if there is any. Please. Yes, friends, any question that you have? Okay. Look at this is a lab for the network, okay, network data activities, and you can see that it is two hours, 19 minutes, the lab duration. If you click on resources, uh, you will find all the machines. See here, the Windows Server 2012, Windows 10, there's Ubuntu. And then Kali Linux is there. So these are the operating system provided. Because it depends on lab. It doesn't mean that you don't have uh, the uh, Android, you don't have the Apple iOS. If you go for the mobile phone investigation, you will get the environment for the mobile phone. Okay. So this is a lab environment, which is basically designed by AC console and lab manuals instructions are given here that you will follow when you will basically start the exercise See here. Step-by-step -step guide is given for your reference. You don't need to worry, worry about the lab manual. So it is available here. See here, investigate system log data using XP logs, then investigating network attacks using a Kiwi log viewer. see it so the complete lab manual with the screenshots what you are going to perform how you're going to do if you are facing some challenges you can click on the screenshot it will show you the basic the output that you can see where you're doing the mistake Uh, yes, friends, any question that you have in your mind, please let me know. See here, the screenshot is given for your reference. So when you're doing the exercises, when you're doing the lab, so you can see that if you're doing any mistake, so you can refer, you can get the help from the screenshot, see here. And the lab manual that will be provided to you when you register for the course, that will be look like this, see here. Lab manual. And you can see for each minute. this is a lab environment if you look here so there's a ubuntu uh, kali linux windows 10 windows server 2012 and then student Visual machine and all the tools are available uh, approximately 2000 tools are given for your practice purpose and these tools are available and these tools will be available to download for your local testing if you want to build your own environment you can download these tools Yes, friend. Any question that you have, please go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. Am I audible? Yes, you are audible, please. Uh, yes, actually, I was just wondering. Um, I have already obtained the uh, CHFI voucher, but okay. I haven't given the exam yet. So, okay. and as you know, the course has like almost more than 1,000 pages in it, which uh, needs lots to read. But will this session be like explaining everything briefly and can help us to achieve the exam? 
Yes, and this so definitely when we start the training, so we're going to cover chapter by chapter. It's like a 40 hours of training, official training. Okay, so this training will be enough to write the exam. As I told you, only you need to understand basically what uh, you are doing. So when you're doing the practice, or when you are attending, uh, reading the courses, so you must understand basically that content. So we are there in 40 hours that will teach you. So after that, you will be in a position to write the exam. I can assure you in the exam, you will not fail. Anyone who is attending the exam training with us, uh, this is assurance or this is confirmation that he or she will not fail in the exam. All right, thank you so much. You. Because I'm teaching these courses uh, since 2009, almost uh, 11 years. Okay, so Alhamdulillah, thanks to Allah that uh, uh, my basically 100% success rate is there. Okay, so you don't need to worry about the exam at all. Just learn the content, understand the content very well, prepare yourself for the real world. I can give the confirmation of your exam that you will not, uh, you will make the exam in the first attempt. Okay. Yes, friend, anyone else, any other question? Yes, guys, any question that you have in your mind? Okay, perfect. If there's no question, it's mean that it is okay. So, yes, friends, uh, why we need the investigation? Let's start some discussion. So, why it is important? Why you are in this demo session? What is objective behind this? Yes, friends, let me start one by one. See the objective of the audience. So might be that will initiate a new conversation. I will start from uh, Abdul Aziz. Abdul Aziz, I'm audible to you. Yeah, uh, hi, can you can you please repeat the question? Yeah, why uh, basically what is your objective to attend this training program? So yeah, uh, uh, it's, 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 it's training under attract that you can attend this program but this training suits you yeah it's basically uh, it's, it's all about uh, forensics that the bad guys are doing some activities and and all those things which are uh, against against the legal and uh, authorities and any every everything related to it so so forensics i believe uh, investigating those activities and uh, and find the root, root cause analysis uh, that's 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 the thing actually to make to make your environment safe and secure. Either you are working in any uh, law enforcement or any uh, any organization is okay. is part of security. Okay. So basically, uh, RCA is so you're facing challenges. Uh, basically, uh, prepare the RCA's investigation. If incident has happened, so how to do the investigation? And might be some reporting required for the government side to for the legal activity uh, like legal actions. Okay, thank you, uh, Abdul Aziz. Adnan, what is your objective to attend this program? Adnan. Adnan Mumtaz, I'm audible to you. Okay. Ali Esker. Amar Farooq. It's okay, no issue. No worries. Uh, we will be there to support you. So uh, we are not only the training centers, we will basically help you in your career as well. Okay. So inshallah we'll help you in cyber security. Thank you. Yes, Amar. Okay. Yes, Ninjala, uh, sorry. What is your objective? Actually, I have started uh, MS in information security six months ago. So mm -hmm. the coursework in MS is uh, literature based mostly. There's no in technical domain 
thing when you go for the courses that's why i joined this course because okay. this would be more of practical thing okay perfect so it's mean that in, you are doing ms in cyber security and you're looking for some technical courses that can help you uh, to complete your master get some knowledge and uh, then you can search for some good opportunity that you can avail in the market right yes okay thank you uh, there is a one interesting uh, comment that uh, there is no single job available in pakistan right there was a question uh, there was basically a comment from one of my friend actually jobs are there uh, j- there are so many jobs are there like uh, in the beginning of 2019 or in the mid of uh, 2019 there was activities against the bank sectors okay and after that activities almost uh, almost any organization every organization they, they have the computer system they are doing some business over the internet or uh, they come like for might be for the branch office connectivity or some they have some portals so they need the security experts why the opportunities are not there the reason uh, why we are not able to see the opportunity the reason the people they are managing the people uh, they are basically posting a job so they are not well aware of such kind of job roles so therefore what they do they call someone uh and then they they think that basically okay if the network person is there the network person can do the network security if the system guy is there systems guy can do the security so basically they are looking for network engineers the net network engineer system engineer but they don't specifically uh put the post or put the basically add for the cyber security opportunities are there only you need to basically uh change your method to search the opportunity so don't think about the title only don't read only the title just look in the job description if the network engineer job is there so you'll find that basically looking for the network security engineer so they are looking for someone who has experience in uh, firewall such kind of things if you read the job description the job requirement then you can find you can find the opportunity so you need to look for that you need to basically uh, find the opportunity for yourself so in pakistan the challenge is there another challenge in cyber security the jobs are very uh, sorry salaries are very low salaries are very low so that is a big challenge we are facing in pakistan as well but inshallah slowly slowly it will so we are there you people are there to support us we are there to promote such kind of things inshallah you will see a good change like in salaries number of jobs of jobs in pakistan that we working and you will get a lot of new new things very soon inshallah is there any other question that you have please anyone okay yes vessel shah your objective to attend this training program assalam alaikum uh, just uh, uh, i just want to uh, have more practical uh, and tool oriented skills Uh, upon the concepts which were discussed in this course and then after that the uh, practical uh, aspect piece ke andar inshallah inshallah so iske liye jaise lab manuals aapko maine abhi show kiya i lab environment and lab manuals hain so these things will, will help you a lot like okay, technically cheeze kaise perform karte hain definitely jab uh, hum log investigation karte hain to we have some challenges uh from the legal side legal side we have some challenges kab kyon ke abhi ki pakistan ke andar jo cyber laws hain ya department or private organizations abhi kaam nahi kar rahe investigation mein to only ye triple c ya government sectors mein jahan pe basically uh jo in cheezon ko lead kar rahe hain uh, legally challenges hain kuch difficulties hain lekin as at least in the side organizations hum log uh, we can do some analysis investigation and we can prepare ourselves uh to defend or uh, uh, to respond such kind of activities in a better way so tech, uh, practically definitely jab aap course start karenge so you will see lab manuals hain lab manuals ke andar har chapter ke andar bahut sari labs hain jo aapko hands on experience denge to keh sakte hain ki out of 40 hours 20 22 hours you will do the hands on you will do the practice practice और उसके बाद भी लैब इन्वायरमेंट आपके पास अवेलेबल होगा फॉर सिक्स मंथ और जहाँ पे आप तमाम टूल जो है वो टेस्ट कर सकते हैं एंड एज ए ट्रेनर हम लोग आपको आउट ऑफ द बॉक्स जो है वो चीज़ें भी डिलीवर करें आउट ऑफ द बॉक्स भी बताएंगे कि रियल वर्ल्ड के अंदर क्योंकि मैं खुद भी और इसी तरह की एक्टिविटीज के अंदर इन्वॉल्व हूँ आई एम वर्किंग एज सॉक मैनेजर तो आई हैव ए रियल वर्ल्ड एक्सपीरियंस 
और सिंस 2000 थाउजेंड आई एम वर्किंग इन इंफॉर्मेशन सिस्टम टेक्नोलॉजी डिफरेंट इन्वायरमेंट को देख चुके हैं तो डेफिनेटली मैं अपना एक्सपीरियंस भी आपके साथ शेयर करूंगा दैट विल हेल्प यूर लॉट जी ओके सो एनी अदर ओके सो काशिफ Sorry guys, my daughter. She is with me, so she is crying. Don't mind that. She is only thirteen months old. Yes, Kashif. Uh, what is your objective to attend this program? Okay, Major Hader, please. Yes, Major Hader. What yes, is your sir. objective? Yeah. so uh, generally i am attending this course just to improve my knowledge and uh, uh, in fact uh, in near future i am uh, planning to open up uh, a adult and forensics company as well in islamabad so okay. the main purpose of uh, this course is to although i am from uh, a purely an it background in army but uh, generally i just want to uh, upgrade my knowledge on forensics and uh, ethical hacking Now, inshallah, Heather, during this uh, training program, as I told you that uh, it's not it's basically uh, we are certified instructor with the experience. Uh, we don't focus only on the content that vendor is giving to us. So, so why we try to basically get some real world experience, real world knowledge, real world scenarios, and that we explain during our courses. So that basically uh, give a lot of uh, skills, uh, like additional skills to the audience. So you will be inshallah. Uh, you will understand these things very well as you are thinking to start your business. So uh, you are going to create some opportunity for yourself and plus the or the others because starting a business is not something that you're going to earn the money. It is something that you're going to open the opportunities for the other people, others, right? So definitely, it's a good cause. Starting a business is always good because you're going to be source for many uh, like source of earning for the many people. So we will That's be there to support you. We'll be there to support you. If you need our support, thank you very much, sir. Inshallah, I'll be in touch. Inshallah. Ah, uh, yes. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. Mubai Sher, are you? Please let us know about your objective. Why you are attending this training program? Ahmed, Muhammad Ahmed. Assalamualaikum. Uh, so, uh, असल में मेरा थोड़ा सा एक्सपीरियंस नेटवर्क सिक्योरिटी और वेब एप्लीकेशन फायरवॉल का है तो मुझे अभी इन्फोसेक साइट पे मूव होना है तो इस वजह से मैं एक्सप्लोर कर रहा हूँ अपने ऑप्शंस और इसी वजह से चीज़ें देख रहा हूँ मैं किस साइट पे मतलब डायरेक्शन के लिए सो इसमें क्या है कि एक्चुअली आई विल लेट ऑनेस्टली ये चीज सी एच एफ आई कोर्स आई इट इज नॉट ऑनली प्रोग्राम ये बेसिकली आपको आपके करियर के अंदर भी हेल्प करता है जैसे भी मेजर uh, हैदर ने बात किया कि अपॉर्चुनिटी जब आप uh, क्या कहते हैं इस तरह की अपॉर्चुनिटीज को तलाश करें अपॉर्चुनिटीज क्रिएट कर रहे हैं तो ये इन्वेस्ट ये सी एच एफ आई कोर्स जो है आपको तीन चार डिफरेंट जॉब रोल्स के लिए आपको हेल्प करता है इट इज नॉट ओनली ए सिंगल प्रोग्राम ओके इसमें एक तो ये कि यू आर रेड आफ्टर दिस प्रोग्राम यू आर You are basically you are preparing yourself as L1, L2. Is ke saath aur you can prepare yourself as an instant response uh, guy. So you will be like taking part in the IR process. Might be you are in future you are going to lead that team as well. Okay. So this course will help you in different areas. Can there will help you. So the knowledge that already you have, like you are working in the network security side, the knowledge you have already there, already with you. So it means that you are already good in that specific area. So just you need to expand yourself, your knowledge to the Uh, other area of information systems okay so inshallah this course of ye course aapko help karega and you will get a lot of new things salman aslam please your opinion your objective attend this pro- training program assalam uh, alaikum i'm just looking what forensics has to offer in infosec that's okay. it that's all so it is offering a lot of things okay so will be there to support you know issues so during training i believe that it will open a new opportunities for you okay the opportunity doesn't mean that it's only the new jobs opportunity mean that basically it will open your mind to think the similar like incident in a different field in a different uh, like you will be in uh, you will might be all right doing the investigation or doing the some analysis but after attending this program it will give you a new approach 
like new ideas that oh this thing could happen in this way as well or this tool i can use for such kind of things like this example i will give to you like uh, virus to, to not so tell me when you receive an email there's an attachment in the email have you ever used the virus total for this thing even a personal email when you receive a person uh, yeah, like email on your personal email id with that contain a link that contain the malicious file or attachment and it is from the unknown person. Okay, it is a might be a word document, but the email came from the unknown person. Have you ever validated that uh, attachment? I don't think so, right? I don't think so. So basically, this course will open. I will give you a lot of new ideas, new approach that you can apply in your day-to-day -day life as well. So at least you can secure, you can uh, secure yourself. You can follow the best practices. And if some things happen, so instead of depending on the others, so you can do some analysis by yourself. Thank you, Salman. Yes, Shihab. Shihab Ali. Uh, yes, Salam Alaikum. Alaikum Salam, Shihab. Uh, yes, actually, as I mentioned earlier, I would like to attend the CHFI exam. And uh, because I already have that voucher for that. And why I want to do that is because I would like to specialize on uh, in mobile forensics. Okay. As I have some uh, background on that, on technical work. Mm -hmm. So CHFI certification would be a good uh, first step on that. Maybe later on I could uh, achieve further certifications. No issues, Shab. So you can talk to Vikas regarding these things. So you have already voted. You can attend this program. So I can I can assure you that uh, you will write. You will make the exam in the first attempt. Okay. And yes. The first time you don't need. Okay. Thank you very much, Sheikh uh, Sidra, Sidra Ashad, if you can tell us the objective to attend this session. What is your plan? Do you, Sidra? Are you there? Okay, Sufyan Ansar. Hello, everyone. Uh, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Actually, I have the understanding of uh, uh, theoretical and practical, but uh, I want to uh, learn more towards the exam perspective so that I can uh, uh, prepare for the exam in the near future. And just as I told you, exam, uh, see, uh, certificate, see any program you attend with the MRGT, okay, I and for everyone, okay, I'm going to clarify this thing. Any program you are attending with MRGT, you must not worry about the exam at all. The reason, uh, as, a, we, as a certified instructor, we know the content of exam very well. So when we deliver the training, so we focus the content plus the exam objectives. So therefore, we always uh, uh, give the assurance to the audience that you will make the exam in the first. We are not going to share the exam content. We are not going to tell you, okay, this is the exam question, please, this is your, uh, this is the answer of that. We're not going to share the exam content. Why? Because we have signed the ND non-disclosure agreement with the vendor. But as we are the instructor as well, we are the partner. So this is our responsibility to guide the audience in a way that they will must not face any challenge while writing the exam. Okay. If you're attending any program, training program with us, if Cisco, it's a Microsoft, it's a, it's a AC Council, it's a Red Hat. So you will make the exam in the first attempt, inshallah. Okay. So just learning can only one condition, one thing that we are uh, we need from the audience side that be sincere with yourself because you're putting money, you're spending money and uh, paying uh, like this much amount, it's not easy, especially when we are living in Pakistan, when earning, uh, is not uh, high and uh, we are saving for a few months. Like for example, if I need to pay 100,000 PK, like eight lakh rupiah Pakistani, if I need to pay program se pay karna ho, then that is a bit difficult for me to save the money, this much money, uh, like might be six months, might be one year saving, then I'm going to spend for this purpose. So you need to, uh, you need to be sincere with yourself. You are putting your effort, you are put, spending the time, you are paying, uh, you are paying a, a good amount for that. Learn it very well. You, we are there. If you're not able to answer your questions, then this is your right to talk to us. Come back to us. Okay, sir, I paid for this training program. I have a doubt. Please clear it, clear it to me. Clarify to me. I need some extra time. I'm not able to understand this topic. I'm not able to align this thing with the real world. So we will be there to support you. Okay. So we're not spending this much money uh, for one training program. 
and you're not going to get our return on investment. What is the benefit of spending this money? Yes, friends. Valley Rahman, what is your objective to attend this training program? Valley. Hasnan Zafar. Okay. Okay, friends, again, uh, lab environment is uh, designed very beautifully by the AC Council. And when we build the local environment, we also follow the same standard because we don't build the environment by ourselves. So there is a uh, lab manual, uh, basic classroom set, setup guide is there that we follow to build the lab environment. So therefore, we are 100% sure that lab environment aligned with the AC Council uh, uh, lab manual, okay? And the lab manual, that if you see here for each chapter there is uh, there's a lab okay see here for each chapter so you will learn a lot of new things okay a lot of new things a lot of new techniques a lot of tools which will help you basically do the investigation so many organizations like in middle east in uh, europe in usa so mostly uh, companies have the security operation center SOC, and there's l1 l2 guys are they, they, these people basically are doing the investigation uh, analysis on regular basis they are dealing with the incident uh, they are handling the incident and they're using the, they're using these skills on in day-to-day -day life okay so uh, regarding the training program as uh, vakas uh, told in the beginning uh, we are we will running uh, we'll be running the two batches one for only pakistan nationals and one for basically for Nabika. why we are running two batches one that uh, the communication uh, issue because still uh, in Pakistan, we're expecting uh, the newcomers, the fresh graduate. So we don't want to put a language barrier for them. Okay. And if for the international uh, candidates, and there is another uh, other thing that basically I want to clear are the purpose of running two batches. One, for the international candidate, uh, there is some additional money that we need to charge from the international students that basically to manage or arrange the exam facility for them. Okay. So one is language barrier. barrier. And second is uh, basically the exam related activity. Uh, so the people that are living in Pakistan, so we'll, we'll get the uh, living in Pakistan. We are okay with that. Even you can join the both sessions. Okay, so one more thing, when you register with us, so you are allowed to sit on, uh, sit in any running batch. You are registered for CHFI. If there are three batches running for CHFI, you can attend the three batches. If there are five batches, you can attend the five batches. And there's a free retake as well. Like once you're done with the course, you have write the exam, but still you want to take this course again only for your knowledge purpose. So you can check with the schedule on our, uh, you can check the schedule on our website. And if you feel that the schedule, given schedule is suitable for you, you can just send a request to our team and they can uh, send the meeting link to you. So you can take this course retake this course on zero cost you don't need to pay any ex extra money for this purpose you can attend both programs you don't need to worry about this thing oh there's uh, only for urdu or english you can if you feel that you are comfortable with the both batches you can join the both batches yes uh, vakas uh, please uh, uh, share the detail with the audience. I'm going to put a slide where they can uh, contact us. Okay, so this was the uh, intro of this course. And intro the next as uh, the class of uh, the session will be the first unit. We're going to talk about the course content, no other discussions. The activity will start the course. And here you can write the email to Vakas at mrglobaltech.com and for registration for the fees. And uh, one more thing that when you pay for the course, uh, within three days, you will get the official courseware from the IC Council. What is the official courseware? Everyone will have its own copy of uh, like courseware. Like if you see here uh, in my slide that I'm presenting to you, there's a my name is written here over the slide. See here. See here. My name is written, right? So everyone will get its uh, his own, his or her own copy. So when you pay for the course, so within three working days or uh, three business days, you will get uh, your own courseware. So what you need to do for that, once you registered, uh, when you pay for that, you need to create an account on the Aspen portal. Aspen portal like this one. When you create your account on Aspen portal, 
so we'll share the uh, access code with you so that access code basically you will put uh, under the subscription option when you log in into this portal and immediately you will get the access to a course fair, lab manual and the tools so tools you can download on your local machine and lab manuals and the course where you can download for your uh, on your local for your pc or mobile phone or any other device that you're using and you can activate your courseware and you can read anytime so this courseware is valid for the one year okay. so everyone will have his uh, the personal copy so it is not we are not going to share the soft copy like the scan pdf or uh, some other method you'll get the official courseware yes any questions so far so please let me know uh, if there's no questions so i will simply and display the slide where you can contact us about our contact detail. So Vakas at, um, uh, at mrglobaltech.com, you can uh, send an email to this email ID and WhatsApp number is given, or you can ping on this uh, number. You can join our YouTube channel as well where all the demo session will be uh, posted. You can uh, watch there again and again, or you can follow our LinkedIn page where you can see all the upcoming events and the first session for all the events that will be free. Uh, so LD in the Middle East, it depends. Like if you are working as L1, so many organizations are offering like eight to 12,000 dirham. So that's approximately, uh, you can say 300 to 4,000 USD. So this is the range uh, for L1. L2, that is 12,000 to 17,000 dirham. Okay, so it's mean uh, near 4,000 uh, USD to 5,000 USD. That is salary range for L1, L2. And then uh, dirhams, yes, it is in dirhams. See, it is for L1, okay? It is for L1, so definitely this is salary in L1. L1, mostly people with the less experience, like only six months, one year experience, or might be two years experience, so that is L1. L2, that is uh, uh, 12 to 16 or 17,000. And for managers or L3, it depends on the organization as well. There are a few organizations like Honeywell, and RSA or some other condition, they pay more money for that. Like for L2, they're paying 22,000. For L1, they're paying 14 to 15,000. So it depends. It depends on organization as well. So, that was in 2009 because at that time, this was uh, IT, uh, see, this was uh, like uh, in that, at that time, at that time, even the CCNA guy was getting 10,000 uh, dirham per month. He's only the CCNA guy. But now, the, even people with the CCI, with the multiple CCIs, they don't get this much salary. I can uh, give the example of my friend, one of my friend who has done uh, dual CCI, but he's working only on 15,000 15, dirham. Okay. So it depends. But uh, starting with 8,000, 10,000, it's not a bad salary at all because uh, it is your start. In my team, uh, my IR manager, they're getting 100,000 of near 200,000. My IR manager, basically, that uh, my reporting manager, because I'm working as a uh, I'm, I'm doing a full time job. Okay. So I'm working as a stock manager. So my manager, the person to whom I report, that guy's child taking a ring near 100,000 dirham. So it depends. It depends on the job role. It depends on basically organization as well. Yes, friends. Okay, so thank you very much, friends. Uh, thanks to join our session. Inshallah, Vakas will share the schedule. And the next weekend, uh, next Sunday, that will be our first class, uh, first session. And that will be the unit one, the importance of investigation the importance of CHFI, the different job rules, and that's all. That will be the start of our course. Thank you very much, friends. Vikas, uh, please coordinate with the audience, and if they have any questions, so please go ahead. Thank you.